Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Christina Akinpora, who is the Senior Program Coordinator for the Town of Clinton. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi again. Hi again. How are you? I know. It seems like I was just here, but a lot's happened. I know. It, it <laughs> does seem like you were just here and a lot's happened. Tell us a yeah. little bit about yourself and how long you've been Senior Coordinator for the Town of Clinton. Sure. So I had started, um, I guess, let's see, now it's um, July June or July 2022. Okay. Um, and we named the program Clinton Senior Connection. There hadn't been a, a program like that that had existed yet. So what was exciting is I got to build it from, you know, the bottom, got to name it and brand it, um, which is my background as marketing. Um, but I also love planning these kind of intimate events uh, and connecting people together. So it was a really good fit. Um, it grew organically but quickly I think I came to see you last year and we were maybe at around 250 subscribers I believe um, so and we've had a lot of growth we, we've done more than doubled that um, and new people are subscribing every day which is fun when I say subscribing I keep an email database which is how I get most of the news and events out okay. um, I run things in the paper I post things online on the town website but for the most part um, people have to be uh, able to digitally communicate to at least get the news of what's going on, some of the events they sign up for. As long as they could do that online, all of the um, other interpersonal things will fall into place. And right. it, it's really fun because they really do make connections with each other, the um, seniors in the town that are coming to events, and then it, it goes from there. Now they have formed their own friendships and events come from other events and it's it's just all rolling really good cool yeah now how did the idea of the program come about well I guess the idea you know preceded me because for a long time it's been said um, that they wanted more of a, a presence of a program for seniors in town right um, a senior center is often you know brought up um, and talked about I personally like the, the way things unfolded because to establish the program first and, and build it with the members and the programming, um, the kinds of activities that we have are kind of a little different than other towns. It lends nicely to us being a little bit more, I, I think of it as like a mobile senior center. We're a little bit on the go. Mm -hmm. um, down the line, if we get a physical space, then that'll be great because we, um, and I believe we will, we already have um, programs to to keep everyone busy and then we could just be able to to do more things but as of now we have so much town space mm -hmm. that's available to us um, that I kind of just I don't know threw things at the wall to see what stuck and most things uh, are engaging enough that um, people people come so a lot of those things turned into regular events um, without much I don't want to say without much effort. It's it's a lot of like organization and admin, but as far as um, attracting people, the seniors in Clinton are so great. They they are so dynamic and interesting and fun. They're willing to do. I mean, I've had them on kayaks. I mean, we do a lot of things that might be out of you know some people's comfort zone, but right. we have that um, camaraderie. So it encourages them like to come out like. And, and try new things like line dancing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two left feet, so I can't. Yeah, do it. it's not my thing either, but I love <laughs> I love watching them do it, yeah. and it's been really popular. Now let's talk about the let's do an overview of some of your events. Sure. Okay, so you can find all this on the um, town website, uh, yep. in the month to month calendar. But um, to to name a few, we have some weekly events, and then we have. Um, kind of like monthly pop-up events. So okay. regularly you'll always find us walking on Wednesday mornings. We do like a traveling walk walking series where we pick um, a locale, we meet there and we walk maybe uh, up to two miles and you could go at your own pace, but you know, we're walking within the group, which is nice. We're starting and we're finishing together. same point and together. Um, we have a creative writing group uh, that meets at the library and that was also just a very small group of amateur writers that had an interest um, and came together and now they're really blossomed into um, like the, 
they're entering writing contests, uh, more than one are on their way to self-publishing. We have a professional writer that helps um, facilitate that. Her name's Becca Wright, she lives in Chester, she's wonderful. She freelances and she comes and she gives us support and encouragement. Um, so we do that um, and that's been a pleasure to watch, you know, people kind of realize some dreams that maybe they had, um, you know, put aside or not even realize that they had. Um, on Thursday, the first Thursday and the third Tuesday of every month, we have live music. Okay. Some of my friends are behind the cameras that come to live music. Okay. And that's a, a picking party is the format. Um, and they play music and now we even have like a following of people that just come to listen. They have made themselves the audience. And you that's got groupies. Great. It, they, we have groupies. There you go. Um, they call themselves the Screechettes. Okay. <laughs> um, and let's see what else we have going on. Like I mentioned, we started line dancing. Um, it's th three months we've been doing that now. Once a month, it's completely free. We have 35 or 40 dancers at that at every um, event and we have a, a wonderful woman from Hamden that teaches it. We do bridge every Thursday. There's a club that gets together and plays bridge. Okay. Um, there's a group that gets together every week and discusses uh, classic literature. They actually read um, books that maybe you haven't looked at since high school or maybe you haven't looked at it at all and have only heard of them, like The Odyssey or Canterbury Tales. Um, we have a woman that facilitates that. She's part of the group but she's also a retired English teacher. And so she uh, makes it very accessible for them. Everything is read aloud within the room. So there's no homework right. and they, they read and they discuss and uh, people are enjoying that. We do cooking once a month. Um, and then we do things that like, uh, you know, we, we've, there's been a f number of performances that we've gotten tickets and we're lucky enough to be able to go see. We saw a Christmas Carol uh, December last month at the um, Legacy Theater in Brantford. We've gone on boat rides and we've gone kayaking and um, the seniors are going, some of them are going to a Yukon game next month. Oh, cool. In February. So yeah, we, uh, we keep busy. We do hiking, we do, there's a free monthly um, arts and crafts every month that anyone could come to. It's free, it's at the town hall. I try to, you know, just make things as accessible uh, as I can. So there, it, even if you have to pay like for cooking or some things, um, like we just did painting uh, on Friday, um, even if there's a, a fee, we, um, you know, we try to offset it a lot with, you know, the town funding so that it could be very affordable for seniors that want to take advantage of it. You did a painting class on Friday? Yes. Gee, I wonder with who. We painted Winter Landscapes with Cindy Stevens. <laughs> yes, <she did. laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think what's great is um, the town, the size of the town um, and the amount of locally supported businesses we have lend so nicely to just so much connection. Um, so I try to loop in and collaborate with small businesses mm -hmm. or groups whenever we can. So like Cindy Stevens is a great example. Um, and you know, we've done yoga classes with Jess at Body Karma. Yeah. We've planned um, seminars with the um, Clinton Police Department okay. and Chief DeMeo. We've, uh, we're, um, I, the library, Henry Carter Hall Library is uh, wonderful as far as you know, booking space and um, holding events. With Mary Beth. Uh, yep, and Sarah. Yep. And uh, we had collaborated, I think it was, uh, oh, it was uh, October, because it was like spooky season, and we had an Edgar um, Allan Poe reenactor come to do a reading um, that we thought 20 or 30 people come and got, it's, it got so big, we had 240 people register and we had to move it to the town hall auditorium. <laughs> and it just speaks to like h how interesting and, you know, willing uh, the residents of the town are willing to to come out and and do something fun if you you know if you if you plan it now when you have most of your events where are they held or is it where's the venue or does it depend on what event you're doing and right yeah it depends on what event um and like i said i the the space is there so it's nice to kind of tailor it depending on what we're doing right. so um 
music surprisingly we do at the library and we get pretty loud and that library is great because they don't mind <laughs> really um yeah and we do writing and reading at the library okay. we do um cooking for the most part we have a traveling chef that comes um and mary's culinary classes i should give her a shout out because she's wonderful um we do that for the most part at the park and rec building there's the kitchen yep. there but we've also done it at the rose room in the rose room is also our when we do the free craft um, the seminars I do in the green room at the town hall. So it, it really depends um, what we're doing, but we've never, we've yet to have a problem of, of not having access to the space. That's why I'm like, the senior center, don't worry about it, it'll come. We basically have a senior center, you know. Um, you just gotta follow along with the calendar. Exactly. Now, how hard is it to learn the game of bridge? Oh, it's hard. It's it's, <laughs> yeah, because I sat through it for a I was gonna say, have you sat through it yet? I did. I did. Uh, the first two or three, maybe, um, we, because we had somebody that was giving us lessons, and uh, it's hard. And Is there's it? a lot of lingo that you have to learn. It's okay. like, there's like a language to it. But I, you know, had been interested in having the bridge game at, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of great games that people have brought up, like Setback and Pinochle, but um, bridge is very, very good, especially for your brain. Is it? Um, yeah, there's like a lot of, you know, cognitive fluidity that is required, I guess. So um, the folks that have come and stuck with it, I give them so much credit because some of them <laughs> were probably beginners as well or, you know, semi-beginners. Right. Um, and they've been playing for over a year and, wow. um, yeah, faithfully and, and good for them. But it was, uh, it was hard. What? And and I was good, and that was strange because it was <laughs> it not <worked>. by. <laughs> yeah. Would you mind sticking around for another second? Yeah, I'd love to. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you. We thought it would be fun if I hopped on here and talk to you about wine varietals. This really was a, a brainchild um, of mine during COVID because we were all home. So I have some examples here for you. This is my favorite new little jacket that I purchased myself. And generators and manifesting generators, again, are you know builders of the world. Then we have these other three types that are a little bit different and less common. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with Christina Akinpora, who is the Senior Coordinator for the Town of Clinton. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take a look at some photos. Yes. And what I'm going to have you do when we take a look at the fo each photo, tell us what we're looking at and maybe do a little bit of a description of sure. the activity. Please. Yeah, I had just picked some that I thought would be a good overview of some right, of the things we've been up to. Start with number one. So um, we took a tree swallow cruise on the Connecticut River Quest, um, okay. which is the boat that goes down the lower Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. So um, th this was the third time we were on this boat. We had done an Eagle Watch last March, and then we actually did our first um, anniversary of Clinton Senior Connection. We, I threw a little party on the boat, and we had our musicians play on that too. It was oh, cool. so much fun. Um, so this was the dance of the tree swallows that happens. Um, this happened to be, I think it was August or September. Okay. Um, and it's beautiful because every night around the same time when the sun sets, there is a ballet in the sky of thousands of swallows. Yeah. Yeah. And so some of the um, folks that came with us and myself included, it was the first time seeing something like that, and it was awesome. So this part was, I captured, I mean, it was so silent, and you just heard like, oh, ah, you know? Really? <laughs> and so really? I had wanted to capture a photo of it, because everyone was just really, like, enchanted. All right. Next photo, Emily. Same, same right. spot. Now, you can't see the swallows yet. I mean, when they come out, they're so far away, they look like bugs. Uh, and then as they get closer, you see all their wings and everything. So that was us. It was just like a beautiful night, too. That was us waiting to see them um, reveal themselves again. They were swooping behind the trees and coming up. It was really great. It really was like a ballet. Cool. Next photo, Emily. 
And that's us inside. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that's the inside in of the boat, yep. Inside of the boat. Next photo, please. Ah, scarecrows. Yeah, people probably remember the Ar Arbor Garden Club of Clinton. Yes. Um, they, had their, uh, they had started last uh, October with mm -hmm. the scarecrow contest. And um, it was so popular. And last year I had, I like to highlight activities that the group does. So last right. year I had kayaks on the lawn of the town um, hall. And uh, we did come in second. Did you? And it, we did. Cool. And I was hoping to come in second or maybe even first this year. But it didn't happen because there were so many great Yes, options. there were. Um, but so I, this year, these, these are the Scarecrows cooking, just to highlight the Cook and Connect event that we do monthly that I mentioned. Um, and... Yeah, so we built, um, I think we named them Sally and Sam or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Next photo, please. Here we go. And this is actual seniors uh, cooking. Okay. This was in December. We had done stuffed strombolis. So that's us at the Ooh. Rose Room at Town Hall. Yeah, it was really great. Um, and it's fun because they pair off. And um, after they watch the cooking demo, Yeah. They go ahead and they, uh, they do it themselves. All the ingredients are fresh and provided. Uh, we make everything very easy. Um, so they go and they replicate what they just saw. We cook it and then we sit and we eat it together. Cool. So it was really nice. Ethelene. Yeah. Uh, with, her, with her stromboli dough. <laughs> that was right before she tossed it in the air, but she did catch it. Did she? Yeah, did she, she did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it didn't land on her head? No. <laughs> And then it's funny, another picture of um, F, and this is Marilyn, and this was another Cook and Connect. Uh, we had made apple butter pork chops. Ooh, so they're always like really good? good seasonal recipes. Yeah, delicious. Oh, we haven't had a bad one yet. No. Um, and I like that picture. They're showing their Clinton they've got, pride. They've got the so, same sweatshirt. Yeah, and that was um, not, on, I mean, they didn't even know each other. That was <laughs> yeah. not planned. So I no. love the town pride. And then this was, um, I took them to Lavender Pond Farm. In Killingworth? In Killingworth, okay. yes. Right before the lavender had, you know, it was at the end of their season yeah. when they were blooming. And we did a uh, tour on the little train there. We did a few different trips just to make room for everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was really fun. And afterwards, actually, the writing group stayed um, on location, and we did, a, we did a creative writing group there. You know, oh, just cool. Just to have a little bit of inspiration from nature. So this was fun. I think the next, yeah, the next picture was. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this picture. Before. Yeah, I have another one of us with our hands up. Is maybe I should have sent you that one like a roller coaster, but you couldn't see their faces. But yeah, this was just us taking the tour, and uh, it was really nice. It was just a nice thing to do on uh, as the summer ended. And then more recently, like I said, we had started uh, line dancing. So this, this was the line dancing yeah, group. This was one of the groups. Um, that, and not everybody, this was the, a, a few people had left and then we thought to take the picture. So oh, there there's go. actually a bigger group that comes and it is really fun. And I'll is point it? out Joe over there, um, second in from uh, where you're sitting in the blue. Yeah. I think she's 92. She doesn't sit down the whole class. She really? does the whole class. Wow. She's amazing Good for him. and walks with us every, every Wednesday. <laughs> Good for she's him. She's awesome. So, um, yeah, that's continuing that based on popularity. I, I, that's, a, that's a great example. Like, I had just was going to do that as a pop-up event, uh, you know, because we're moving inside. I needed to do some more indoor activities. Thought line dancing would be fun. It was such a hit. Uh, before it was even over, they were asking, when will the next one be? When's will you the do next it again? one? When's the next one? So we made it a monthly event. Um, and in February, we're also going to do cardio drumming with the same instructor that does line dancing. We're doing cardio drumming. What's cardio drumming? It involves an exercise ball okay. that sits on a bucket. So like the bucket's the base yeah. and I got drumsticks and we are, and you drum along to uh, a song, but you oh, do cool. enough songs <laughs> at enough of a, of a pace and you're also switching like choreography yeah. uh, that it is actually a cardiovascular workout and you could do it standing or you could do it sitting. Cool. So really anybody of any ability should be able to do it. And really? I thought it sounded fun. So I went out there and I got those exercise balls and I don't know where I'm gonna put them yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a box somewhere. <laughs> so far, they're in a box. But once I inflate them, I don't know where I'm going to Tucked in the corner, but we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll show up soon. So I'm excited for that. That's next month. I have a few things coming up in February kind of heart-related, you know, because it's Valentine's Yeah, what's going on? What's coming up? 
So we have the cardio drumming. We have a Valentine craft on the 6th. Um, we're making like centerpieces and um, mugs full of candy and kind of decorative. That's also not just like bridge. I also cannot teach that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I have no. a wonderful volunteer, Deb, that comes and does that with us. Um, we have manicures Ooh. for like a little Galentine celebration. All right. We have a seminar coming up at the end of February that I'm excited about, um, talking about growth mindset. I have a life coach that's coming and, um, you know, younger generations like millennials and younger, they have a lot of access to, you know, more kind of, you know, therapy and mental health talk. Uh, yeah. But this is for, uh, this is this is a workshop for um, changing your mindset and kind of learning how to think differently of, you know, things around you in the world right. and maybe reconcile with some other, you know, re relationships you have, just kind of opening your heart and your mind and so. We'll see how it goes. What else is coming up in the, now what's, yeah, what do you have planned for the spring? Well, yeah, so then I always get excited when we could finally start doing more outdoor things. Yes, please. Because it's such a wonderful coastline, so I, and I do love the water, so we'll definitely do more kayak trips. We had done, um, it was such a humid summer last year. Yes. So I had, I had planned to do a monthly sunset um, kayak. Okay. The problem was every single month, that one kept getting canceled. Oh no! The, the, like the, we couldn't even get the first off the ground because of the humidity. It was canceled. Or, yeah, it was too know, hot. Thunderstorms, whatever. So we kept pushing it. We finally got it, got it done. It was the most beautiful night, so it was worth the wait. But then it was turning cooler, so we couldn't do as many as I want. So we'll bring back the kayaking. Um, when we do our picking parties, the live music that I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, that's at the library twice a month, we move those to outside um, by the pavilion I at know, the library. So that's the how they got the their library, name. Sure. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll have to, we do hikes, we do farm tours. I'll have to start thinking of more outdoor things. You know, it'll be here before we know it. Now we're going to continue the cooking series in the fall. In yeah, the definitely. The cooking's huge. Definitely. I mean, because anything with eating. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so the cooking's big. Um, now, tomorrow, I don't know when this will be on, but we have our um, trivia tournament. Um, first ever trivia tournament that I'm doing at the town hall. Okay. But um, I said, if you've never played trivia, don't worry. Think of it as a pizza party. So I'm getting some Not pizza. <laughs> I just face everything around what we could um, enjoy for food too. So the cooking is not going anywhere. Um, maybe we'll even, you know, um, see how else or where else we could do that. I mean, maybe, we, you know, we talked about, maybe we'll do a demo or something like that um, for you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, people, if people like the, um, the fitness things, like mm -hmm. they tend to do, um, happy to do more of that. We had done um, a few Fridays of the of the summer. We had met at the pavilion at uh, the town beach, okay, and brought music and did exercise there with actually the group from St. Mary's. They have okay. a senior exercise group. So, like again, yes, they do. Yeah, just I'm, another I'm example, thinking, like yes, they do. connecting them. They, you know, and so now some of the people who had who come to my events but didn't know that they had done that at St. Mary's, now they just are, right. you know, going to work out there and sometimes we do it together. So it's just a matter of um, introducing people and then, and then, you know, letting it, letting them take it from there. Now to join your, or now to join your group, yes. are there age requirements or? Um, over 55. So okay. really, <laughs> and I don't card anybody. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, according to the town website, and you can find, if you go on um, clintonct.org and mm -hmm. you go under departments and you click on senior program, you'll find an overview there. Um, and, and that's, you know, it says 55 and over. And, and to be honest, there's, there's seniors from our, our neighboring towns that come to things. Um, and that's great. You know, like I said, building friendships and relationships, it doesn't have to be, you know, bordered by the town. So, um, the more the merrier uh, in that case. You can find out when you're on that page, there's um, a line about uh, subscribing to the newsletter. Okay. That would be what I would tell everyone to do. 
so that they don't have to actively search out what's going on. I mean, they're welcome to. It's I, I keep the, the town calendar up to date. Okay. Um, even if you just go on the homepage of the town calendar, over on the right, it'll say senior events, and it'll say the next ones that are coming up. Oh, will it? But, yeah. Okay. But to take the guesswork out of it, if they want to subscribe, um, I send pretty regular emails. I, I try not to overdo it because I don't want to bother people too much. But, yeah, right. Um, you know, just with with uh, monthly news and then reminders and then as events come up, you know, just letting them know, you know, that there's still time to sign up. Sometimes I, I try to get things in a Harbor News um, because, like I for a small town, it's surprising how sometimes news will not travel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people are still like, there's a senior program. I'm like, oh, wow. To me, I feel like it's everywhere. Exactly. So I'll try to put stuff in the paper and stuff, but I, I do miss the deadline. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's why the, in, the, the instantness of the uh, internet is a little easier for me, but I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. Now, normally when you guys do any of your activities, what time? Is it during the day? Is it's it mostly during the day because okay. I try to, you know, I, I, I try to I do that. I know people like to get together, you know, sometimes 10 or 11 a.m. Um, sometimes we do things, you know, the one o'clock hour uh, music. We first Thursday of every month where they're two to four. Typically, I don't do anything much later than that in the cold winter months. Right. Um, with the exception of, I'm sorry, the, the Connect with the Classics, which is the, um, the literary group, they yep. meet on Mondays at 5. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, then if there's something like, like the Swallow Cruise or anything on the river or right. like the kayaking where we're doing Surrounding Sunset, that's probably the only time we make the exception of going out too late. For the most yeah. part, I try to give fun things to do during the day because yeah. um, most of these folks are retired. Um, but I do keep in mind that not all of them are, so mm -hmm. it's nice that, it, you know, if there's things that, I, especially that's where the library collaboration is really great, because yeah. we could do a lot of evening programs there, and we have, and, you know, we hope to continue to, but, you know, just give people access to, um, you know, things that fit into their schedule. Absolutely. Yeah. Christine Ackenpour, thanks for some time, and hopefully we'll thanks see you soon. Thanks for having me, Pete. I hope so. You got Thank it. Thank you. On behalf of Christine Ackenpour, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.